Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. So I thought I would just film a really quick video on the fly because I made a post on YouTube asking what you felt was missing from the withdrawal slash support slash coaching community. And I got several requests or comments about hope and giving hope for people with severe mental symptoms. Now this is a topic that I'm really passionate about and I can speak a lot on because my mental symptoms were so severe. So I need to majorly give a trigger warning for this video because I am gonna detail somewhat. I know I've made other videos about my mental symptoms, but I am gonna go into a bit of a symptom description. Well, maybe more than a bit. So I just wanna preface this by saying that, but the reason why I want to give details is because I know that speaking about mental symptoms, especially very severe ones, is taboo. There's a lot of stigma attached to it and people are scared to talk about it. So that's the main reason why I want to get into the symptom description and also give a message of hope. So like I always say at the beginning of my videos, I am offering one-on-one -on -one coaching for those who need it. I offer it at lower rates than other places online. I offer free 15 minute consultation, 30 minute, 60 minute calls. And then I also do session packages if you're looking for something more regularly at a further discounted rate. And I'll put the link to my online booking cal calendar in the description of this video. I will also put the link to my website if you're interested in learning more about my story, my history with psych drugs. And you'll also be able to book a session through my website as well. And then I will leave my email address if you have just a single question you'd like to ask me. I will answer that if it's only just one question because I just don't have time to answer lengthy emails. So here's my message of hope. So my mental symptoms started when I quit my seven year SSRI use. I took SSRIs for when I got laid off from my job, I had depressive symptoms. I don't believe I had clinical depression, but I was placed on them anyway, and I was kept on them for seven years. And then I talked to my doctor at the time in 2018, so after being on them for seven years about coming off, I did a four week taper, which I had no idea was fast. And about two weeks after I took my last dose, I was at work one day and I had a very vivid visual flashed in my mind um, of self-harm. So this is where I'm going to get into the, the trigger warning here. Um, so like cutting, I, I could very, very visually and in my mind's eye see imagery that would flash quickly through my mind of me self-harming. I, I have no, no history of self-harming, never done anything like that in my life, but I just... I was in a conversation with someone at work and I just kept getting these mental images flashing through my head of me engaging in self-harm and it was repeating and it freaked me out and I'm like, where is this coming from? Make it stop. And I just like, I have a history of anxiety, but I had gotten over it for the most part years before I took meds. It really didn't affect me anymore. I did a lot of cognitive behavioral therapy and I overcame my anxiety disorder so I was like I had had some intrusive thoughts throughout my life um, but nothing that was on repeat like what was happening after I quit SSRIs and so I was like okay well I must just be anxious or stressed out so I'm gonna use my cognitive behavioral therapy techniques to try to mitigate or relieve myself of these flashing images and nothing I was doing was working and so I remember going to bed that night and thinking, okay, well, I need just like a good night's sleep because I didn't know that I was in withdrawal. I didn't know you could get symptoms from quitting antidepressants. So woke up and then the next morning and the images started repeating again. And I had other symptoms like panic attacks and insomnia mixed with fatigue. I had a lot of nausea. I had very bad headaches. I had, did I say panic attacks? I felt depressed and I was just like unmotivated. I remember just laying in bed on the weekends and being like, I just have no desire to do anything. And I've always been a very driven person, very, very driven. So it was not like me, but the most distressing of all the symptoms at that time was the intrusive thoughts. And so they repeated every day, all day for six months and it nearly drove me insane. And then they disappeared like overnight and I still hadn't figured out that I was in withdrawal at this point. It still took me two months after they disappeared 
to figure out, like I, I came across the forums then because I was still having some lingering symptoms other than intrusive thoughts and I was Googling and no doctor was, because no doctor was telling me what was going on. And so I found the forums. Um, and then about five or six months after they disappeared, they came back with no apparent trigger. At that point I had heard of withdrawal. I knew that there was withdrawal syndrome and that's what I had been experiencing. But then, like I said, the worst of my symptoms disappeared at the six month mark, but then they came back. And so I went another 18 months um, after they came back, having looping, repeating intrusive thoughts every day, all day. But a lot of my other symptoms were still gone. So I was like, this can't be withdrawal because I didn't know really hardly anybody. I don't know at that point if I had met anybody that had the symptom, this particular symptom, the way that I had it. And so I was like, well, because I don't feel any associated physical anxiety anymore, I don't have most of the other symptoms that I had after I quit antidepressants, I've got to be just a severe OCD case. And so at 18 months after the symptoms came back, I reinstated, which was a disaster because almost immediately my symptoms started to switch themes within the harm theme, but they got more violent and then this is when started my in and out of the hospital. I was given a bunch of different SSRIs to help the OCD by different psychiatrists. I tried like Prozac and Luvox and Zoloft. And then I tried, you know, quote, buffering them with antipsychotics. And I developed akathisia. I got addicted to benzos. I don't even like saying addicted. I wasn't chasing a high, but I was so bad. After the reinstatement of polydrugging, I, you know, developed a movement disorder, full body movements, five days straight of no sleep. I was totally like, I felt delirious. I was in such DPDR pacing around the house at, you know, all hours of the night. And so at that point I had tried, so in a three month span, when I reinstated, I tried eight different drugs, including, like I said, other SSRIs, antipsychotic, benzos, and anticonvulsives, and every single drug made me worse. Every single drug brought on new mental symptoms. So again, trigger warning, um, they're quite disturbing. So, you know, every drug, like I said, brought on new mental symptoms, and then I developed a paradoxical reaction to the benzos, was cold turkeyed off those in the hospital, thrown in the psych ward, whatever, all those things, and then... Um, after coming off the benzos, my mind was absolutely like psychotic. I was having repeating thoughts all day long. So not only did the meds not help, which is why I reinstated, but everything got worse. And then I developed all of the physical symptoms, the burning, the electricity, the movements, the akathisia, the, it was just an absolute nightmare. And I was having visions that would just rotate between these every second of the day. I would, and I, I developed tactile hallucinations. Uh, that's what they called them. One psychiatrist, so she said somatic hallucinations. I was, I would have thoughts of, you know, a, a, a sword or like a knife being pounded into my, like pummeled into my chest with in extreme force. And I could feel every sensation that you would feel if that was really happening. The coolness of the weapon, the sharpness, the like, and then I would, and then right after that, I'd have an intrusive thought of an ax going through my head or something ripping through my spine. And I was constantly moving and my body would throw itself forward if I was having an intrusive about something going through my back. And then if something was going through my chest, I would physically like vis have a visceral reaction like it was real. Um, I was having, that would just repeat all day long between those every second of the day. And sometimes I'd have intrusives about, you know, a neck or a knife being jabbed into my neck over and over and blood just spattering everywhere. I would see myself swinging from nooses. I would have demonic screaming in my head, hissing, laughing, gurgling. I mean, you know, like like and I would I would go like this because I it it was like I could almost feel my ear moving because it was so loud that I feel I felt like a whoop like in my ear if, like if someone jumped out in front of you or behind you sorry like behind you and screamed in your ear and you would kind of have that whoop in your ear I would have that like it was real it was and I was engaging like I would I would bang my head into windows walls I, I spent so much time screaming um 
I would hit myself. I would try to pull my hair out. I was rocking. It was an absolute nightmare. And again, the reason I share this is because I had several requests to speak on the mental symptoms and how to give hope for them. And I know, like I said, that this is a taboo topic and people don't want to talk about it. And also it's not as common in this community, or at least people aren't talking about it in a way that makes it seem common as it as a lot of the other symptoms like DPDR and the, all the symptoms are horrible like extreme insomnia and akathisia they're all horrible but the mental symptoms are just I, I mean I that was my experience through all the forums and groups I was in all the people I talked to I just could not find very many people just a handful of people in my years of searching that had it like I had it and but I've since I put my other mental symptom videos uh, out I've had other people come forward and messaging me and saying oh my god this is me and so I did not have like prior to medication I would have the odd intrusive thought like a lot of people experience um, some of them would kind of jar me and I'd have a panic attack but then it would just go away it'd be like a one-off thing it would freak me out and then it was gone this was repeating and repeating and repeating and repeating for years on end um, and then I've shared this before I had so from my first SSRI withdrawal, which was in April of 2018 when I came off, to I then did not have my first window from mental symptoms until August of 2021. So that is three and a half years and that was like an hour window um, where I suddenly felt like my thoughts weren't in the forefront of my mind. They were still there and I was aware of it, but it was more in the background. And then I went to bed and woke up and it started over again. And then I started getting kind of windows and waves where I would have brief periods where I'd forget about it and I'd be fully present and not in my head constantly with violence. Uh, that just went through a lot of windows and waves um, after August of 2021. And then in November of 2022, I started, I started having these weird, strange brain sensations, but they felt pleasant as opposed to like the burning and sloshing and zapping that I had felt before. And then it was like the normal part of my brain turned back on and suddenly, you know, I could go a week without having repeating thoughts. And then, you know, where I, they were gone. They weren't just like in the back, they were gone. And now like my experience is I live a normal life. I don't wake up. Like it used to be so bad that I wouldn't even be fully awake yet. I wouldn't even have my eyes open and my thoughts were repeating. It was just horrendous. And, and then, you know, now I wake up and, you know, I watch Sesame Street with my, I have a little girl. I, I have, and that's the thing too, is, I mean, I had bad physical symptoms. Don't get me wrong. I did, but they did not last nearly as long as the mental. And so I, I could never distract, but I tried so hard to distract. So I reconnected with an ex-boyfriend that I had been madly in love with for so many years and got pregnant. So, I, I mean... And I just remember being with him and being like, this guy was the man of my dreams for so long when I used to be normal. And now I'm around him and I'm trying so hard. To, like he is the one person that I that could distract me from this. And I still wasn't distracted. I would spend days with him. And I like, and I, he was someone that I knew very, very, very well. Cause I had been with for years. And then when we reconnected, I was like, I can be myself around him. He knew about my drug withdrawal and all that stuff. Um, but he hadn't seen me since I reinstated. And anyway, so I remember just trying to be in the moment with him. We'd like go out for a meal or we would, um, you know, sit at home a lot of the time. Because we, you know, I and I was just so out of my mind. And I, I just was like, and I remember like he knew about my thoughts and stuff like that. But I... He didn't know how bad it was. Like I would try to do stuff with him and I was just so distracted by my thoughts. The only thing that took me out of my thoughts was sex. And that was, you know, brief periods of time. And that's how I got pregnant. Anyway, so when my daughter was six months old, November of 2022, it was like my the normal part of my brain turned on. And now, I, you know, I get up in the morning, I watch Sesame Street, I drink, I don't, I don't drink like regular coffee. I drink decaf. I can do that. Um, I drink decaf coffee and I just, I go about my day. I work, I coach, um, I run my errands, I take care of my house, my, my daughter, and I, I'm like a normal person now. And I have cried tears of joy, like 
over and over and over and over because I mean, I never, ever, ever, ever thought that I would ever have a normal head again. Um, because that whole neuroscience thing where it says what wires together, what fires together, wires together. And I'm like, my God, I've had these repeating thoughts for literally years, like from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to bed, how is that not like so deeply ingrained? And let me tell you, like I tried everything known to man, known to help OCD, known to help intrusive thoughts over the years. I tried magnesium three and eight that's supposed to get to the brain. I tried all of the, all of the supplements, the mental supplements and taurine and inositol, which is supposed to be like a miracle supplement for people with intrusive thoughts. I tried the highest dose for I think six weeks or 12 weeks. Um, this was before I had akathisia. I tried NAC in like the highest doses, which is supposed to be like a detoxer and all that and it's supposed to help with intrusive thoughts. None of it made any difference. I tried exposure and exposure and response prevention. I tried CBT. I tried like everything you can try. I tried reinstating the drugs. I tried taking the quote OCD drugs bolstered with an antipsychotic. I tried, you know, everything and nothing helped. I tried distract distraction. I could not distract. I mean, I would, my body would be present somewhere where, you know, you think you could distract like being around my ex-boyfriend and trying to do things with him although we didn't do much we kind of just hung out together because we knew each other so well we didn't and I and I was so sick um so we would just hang out on the couch and like I would try to talk and do what I used to do with him and I was just out of my damn mind but he was the one person that made me feel safe enough where I could be crazy around essentially um and like I like I tried everything and nothing helped and I remember just being like am I having seizures because it was just on repeat and it didn't matter what I did it was like my brain was and I also had like the sensations like brain burning and sloshing around and I had brain zaps in my first withdrawal and I had like feeling like there was hot spiders dancing on my face and on my head and hot oil being dripped and like I had all these crazy nervous sensations and lots and lots of face pain I had face and head pain all kinds of stuff and I just was like my brain is so screwed it was so incredibly screwed up and now I feel better and I sleep you know eight to ten hours a night I mean depending on my daughter you know and I just I it's amazing to me that you can recover from this and I remember I remember just being like nobody has these types of mental symptoms like me like how am I ever going to get better and the couple of people and handful of people that I did talk to they were not getting better and so I was like, my God, how am I going to live with this for the rest of my life? Like, I'm going to end up ending it because I can't, I, I cannot cope with this. Like, but I always clung to, okay, if other people with severe symptoms, even though they're not the same as mine, if they can recover, then I'm going to recover. And traumatized 80 is very well known in this community. I became friends with her. Um, I know she didn't have the same mental symptoms as me, but she was a very severe case. Many, many people in this community are friends with her, or sorry, are aware of her and are aware of her story. Um, I know she's very, very, very limited and she restricts herself from who she talks to, but she had such a heart for me because, um, because I got pregnant and she went through this horror while pregnant. And so you know, I chatted with her on the phone and she kept me going and I would message her while I was pregnant. I was just scared out of my mind because at that point I was so sensitive to everything and that was really helpful and I clung to that. I'm like, man, if she, like, if she can get better, I can get better even though our symptoms were not the same. She didn't have the mental like I did. Um, and there's other people too, like I would just over and over and over and over just repeat or read their stories and you know clung to my support group and there was one lady in our support group who's a dear friend of mine now she had the mental very 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 bad too very bad um and so i you know i spent a lot of hours and hours and hours and hours on video chat with her like just crying with her and it was it was such an ordeal like it was and i knew the reason i reinstated was because you know i couldn't find many other people that had my symptoms and I just let the doctors convince me I was mentally ill even though I wasn't before the drugs and in a way I'm glad I reinstated because it became very clear to me 
when I got worse and new symptoms, especially mental symptoms on every single drug, I'm like, it was a drug all along. I finally like clicked on a, like a gut level for me. And I'm like, to hell with these drugs and psych words and psychiatrists. Like I was just so done. And it was, it was like, it was all meant to be because I came out the other side and now I talk to people and I've had people that I've been coaching and that I've coached that say, like, I heard your story and I never like, and very emotional people say, I had no idea that there was someone who suffered mentally like I'm suffering. And, you know, I've cried during several of my sessions because it's so, I, I feel on such a deep level what these people are going through. And I also cry like tears of joy because I know that they're going to get better and I got better. And I, like just thinking to how bad it was, I just, I, I had to, to, to send this video or make this video because I know there's a lot of people that are suffering tremendously from mental symptoms and it doesn't matter necessarily what the theme of your mental symptoms are. I've been getting more and more people sharing openly what their exact mental symptoms are. It, it's all the same problem. Um, whatever these drugs do to the brain chemically and it doesn't matter how like I mean I must have had tens of thousands of intrusive thoughts a day like I'm not even exaggerating it was that bad um and the visceral reactions were just I, it, it was just something I, I couldn't even have imagined could actually happen to someone if I hadn't experienced it myself and someone tried to tell me that this could happen I I it, it was it was so extreme um and I just feel so grateful that I made it out the other side. And I believe personally that once you have these, especially if you're someone who's had adverse reactions, that was when my mental got very extreme was when I, my original withdrawal was bad enough, but then once I compounded it with more drugs and adverse reactions, that's when it got to like extreme levels. And so I really believe that once you have the adverse reactions and stuff you've got to stay med free like I know it's so tempting to try all different kinds of drugs and, and like you know there's this drug coming out for OCD I'm talking like psych drugs um but I really feel like you have to stay off them you know and it's just something goes really wrong in your brain when you have these reactions and eventually you do recover but the more I always say to people if you're going, I know reinstatement works for some people, but if you're going to reinstate or go the, down the drug route because, you know, your family is pressuring you or encouraging you and you just feel like that's the route for you, um, I never tell people what to do, but I say you either got to shit or get off the pot. You can't be messing around with, you know, a week of pills here and, well, you know, I'm going to go drug free, but after three months, oh, I just, I can't take it. So I'm going to take benzos for two weeks. Or I'm going to try an antipsychotic for a week or two just so I can sleep. I just don't feel like you can do that when you're like this. And I know some people will disagree with me, but I've just seen it time and again where, you know, if you do decide to go the drug route, you have to, you have to stick to a plan. You can't. And that was what I did when I reinstated was, you know, I was getting conflicting information from, you know, my doctors versus the forums. And so I was like, because the doctors kept saying you need to be on a high dose for OCD. You have to be on like the max dose of Luvox and all those those ones. But then the forums are like, no, you want to prevent like the most severe adverse reactions. Start low. You know, that should be enough to mitigate withdrawal. Um, and so I was going up and down in doses. That's another thing. You know, there's there's the going on and off the drugs, which I really feel is just a a catalyst for just bomb after bomb blowing off in your nervous system but going up and down in dose all the time is creates kindling reactions in a lot of people that's what happened to me I did both I was on and off and on and off and on and off in my reinstatements I'm like oh damn you know I'm sick of these drugs and oh but I need them because I have OCD oh you know I should take a low dose because I'm listening to the forums but oh no they say that it's not therapeutic and you know, psychiatrists are saying I need to be on the max dose. So I'd go off and on and up and down. And I mean, it's no wonder I ended up as bad as I am. It just seems like that's, I don't know what happens to our bodies and, and brains once, you know, we have these kindling sensitivities and whatever, but you have to either stay on or you got to come off. You can't be messing around. Like they are not, as we know, benign drugs. So, but there is hope, you know, no matter what you're going through, if it's hallucinations, if it's intrusive thoughts, obsessions, and I know like, you know, you're not 
probably obsessing about cupcakes and rainbows and lollipops. The themes are very, very dark, um, very dark, and they impose on your values and the things that you cherish the most. That's where they come and warp and dement them. It's twisted. I don't know what the brain is. I don't know, but that's what happens. So, I mean, I've been through all of that and it, it just goes away eventually. And you got to listen to the people who have had success and come out the other side because I spent so long doubting, you know, wow, do you really recover? You know, staying off drugs, don't I need them? Aren't I mentally ill? Blah, blah, blah. And, you know, nobody has my symptoms and so nobody understands. And eventually I was like, okay, Melissa, like you've been going through this long enough. Your family is sick of hearing about it. You're sick of suffering. Like you got to commit, you got to stay on, you got to come off. And so I finally was like, I'm coming off this shit. I'm staying off and I'm going to heal come hell or high water. And I did. So that's just my little message of hope. I hope it, I hope it's a hopeful message. I just, that's again, that's why I outlined how bad my symptoms are because I think people who are severe need to hear that you know that you can come out the other side but you really have to take care of yourself I was very careful with um you know I was damn like I was never ever taking a psych drug ever again but I also was very careful with any other pharmaceuticals I personally I can't take anything over-the-counter pharmaceutical without a reaction um even now and so I just I stay clear of everything unless it's life or death and I I'm very very careful about my toxic load um so I I changed all of my personal care products uh my household cleaning products things I use on a daily basis and I I swear it helped me so that's just my two cents but you guys are gonna make it through no matter you know how much I mean it is it is like it's torture, like actual literal torture, um, when you can't escape your own mind that is on repeat with thoughts that are not even yours day in and day out, thousands and tens of thousands of times a day for what feels like eternity. Um, but it will change for you. So just, just take care of yourself and do the best that you can to actively distract and get support and hold on to that hope because it does eventually change. So this is getting long. I'm going to stop this now, but there's my, my hope video for those of you who have severe mental symptoms.